Hello and welcome to my workshop. So today we're going to be working on a trailer. And this is for a uh, build I did quite a while ago. It's uh, named Hack Job. And it's a uh, Toyota pickup truck with an exo cage. And so we're going to do a trailer that kind of, you know, goes along with that theme of an exo cage. And um, something kind of small and be nice to uh, pull behind uh, this little truck down the, down the trail. Alright, so let's get started. So the first thing I usually start off with, with most of these builds, is a, a, a nice sketch. So here I have you know, the top, the side, and the front view. And I'm using that to uh, kind of figure out what material I want to use and I'm getting a general idea for the uh, layout for this chassis. In order to make the corner, uh, one of the things I've, I do to kind of make that um, go a little, a little bit better of a bend and make it look a little nicer is just make a notch in that and uh, usually do that the bandsaw and just keep working it till that that forms a 90 and then you can uh, then silver solder that joint up and it makes a really strong nice joint so here you can see where i'm uh, you know silver soldering that joint up that was uh, cut so i'm trying to get both sides nice and equal and uh miss, you know the more you can get these thing uh even and square uh, the better off it's going to look. So basically, I make two, you know, identical pieces, and now I'm, you know, putting them together, and that makes forms of, you know, the rectangle of the chassis. And so you just basically do whatever you can to get that thing square and held in place. And here I'm just using uh, some masking tape. So this is just a little cross brace, which is going to eventually be used to help um, support the uh, like the main tongue piece that's going to come down through the center and uh, hold the coupler. As you see, I'm using this piece of uh, brass, and it's the same size for the uh, that the coupler will be mounted on. So I just basically cut a notch out that it slips through the front and then it's going to rest up against that brace in the back and then they'll, they'll all get silver soldered together and that'll give you a nice nice good structure for that thing to uh, be pulled down the trail. Okay, so I've uh, got the basic, uh, I guess, chassis structure for the uh, trailer complete. And this is just the, uh, you know, brass tubing. It's this uh, K&S Precision Metals. And it comes in different shapes and sizes and thicknesses and what have you. Um, this piece that runs up the center is a uh, 7 seconds, And this is the, sh the size and shape we designed the uh, coupler to fit over... Um, the one that the uh, push rod 3d sells and I, t I tell you what that's if you're going to build a trailer that's really the way to go with that coupler it uh fits right on the axial trailer hitch and um the thing just works works flawlessly the guy that i'm making this for he is a, a very good test driver uh, i say that because he breaks nearly everything i make for him so i have to really over engineer stuff i uh normally i'm okay with just the brass tubing uh, it does get a little bit soft with the heat, but it's generally okay enough. The uh, but what I ended up doing here is I took a piece of stainless steel tubing. Uh, it wasn't exactly the same size as the the inside of here, but it was very close. And I put it the full length going down this piece here, and then I just uh, filled the entire end of it with uh, silver solder just to you know cap it off and kind of hold it in place. Now you can bend and kind of feel it knocking around but that's really going to add a lot of strength uh you know it may get a little bend in it here and there if he really gets on it but it's not going to uh, kink over so uh what i have to next is to start building the uh, structure i'm going to make that out of styrene it's going to look like an older style military um trailer and then I'm end up with some type of a, a cover on top uh out of uh probably tubing uh probably more of this uh stainless steel tubing 
to uh, mirror the look of the uh, exo cage that's on the uh, truck this is going to pull behind. All right, so let's get to that. So the one thing you'll see is I do a lot of measuring, a lot of double checking. Uh, usually uh, try to get that square to just make sure that every piece I pick up has a nice square edge. Because uh, if you you can look at one, a piece and it'll look like it's nice and square, got a good 90 on it, and it won't. It'll be just slightly off, and then you just start adding pieces, adding pieces, and before you know it, you, you, the whole part's kind of wonky, uh, and, and it really just doesn't look as good. So you know, take your time and um, make sure everything is square. Take some good measurements, and um, everything will come out a lot better. So here, just uh, gluing on the side pieces to start this off, and using the, uh, it's actually clear uh, PVC cleaner. Uh, same active ingredient as your, your you know, the stuff you'll buy in any uh, ho you know, hobby store. It's just a lot cheaper uh, to buy in volume. So I use that to, to glue and, and get that kind of solvent glue the thing down. And a lot of times I'll come back and uh, back that with a, uh, a super glue. And that's mainly just to add a little bit of structure in the back. But uh, the biggest part is it allows me to, to move along quicker. Because it takes, does take, you know, a good 30, 45 minutes to an hour, depending on the thickness of the piece, for that solvent to really... Um, you know, harden back up and, and, and not stand a chance of, of bending and moving around. You see, if you make a score and you kind of bend, uh, you can snap these pieces off. And when you have a, you know, a straight cut, that's not a big deal. But when you have pieces coming in at an angle, then uh, sometimes it'll leave a little extra flashing on there. But it, you know, it's not a big of a big deal. You can sand that off, or take a razor blade and, and cut that off and get it down uh, into shape. Here I'm getting ready to uh, mount up the uh, suspension and so I'm doing this probably a little bit different than what it was intended but uh, I had some pieces left over so I had to make do with what I have and uh, on one end I needed a little bit more um, structure so I'm just silver soldering on a piece of thicker brass to the bottom and that way it's not it's just the thin tubing that I'm relying on holding that suspension in place it's that thicker brass that's soldered on there. I believe the, the suspension is from a D90. Uh, it's the shorter leaves, but um, I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, I have generally bags of suspension laying around from where I've worked on different trucks, and you, they just end up kind of compiling in one. So this is what I was able to pull out and make do with what I had. Now I'm, uh, you know, I didn't have the uh, the axle and the tires, so I just borrowed a set from my uh, my trailer just so I can get the uh, get the thing mocked up and, and keep moving on. So making some uh, more progress on the trailer here, uh, really starting to come together. I have the uh, front and rear and the, the box all put together for the uh, bottom of, you know, basically the trailer part of it. The uh, chassis, I got a little bit further along by adding in the leaf springs and a uh, this axle. And now this is a uh, borrowed axle and tires and wheels from my trailer, but um, the this is gonna be basically the same axle, different wheels and tires. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what he's gonna put on there, but you know we'll just go with whatever that is. The um, the bottom here needs to get a thicker piece of styrene glued on. 
that's going to match up with this rail here. And so it'll notch down in. And it'll do two things. It'll want to raise this up so these um, points right here won't be interfering with the body. I'll just have to make sure that's uh, you know thinned out and clearance right there. But it'll also give me a place to mount this to this trailer. So I'll go up underneath, drill you know smaller through holes, and that'll be just fine to, to, to mount this in with a uh, like a two millimeter screw. And I'll just get some longer ones, and it'll it'll just go right up into that thicker styrene, and um, that should hold it on just fine. Then it's you know build up the sides, and um, I have these these uh, fender caps or you know I guess fenders that um, you know made of styrene that have to be glued on, as well as you know kind of finishing all their other details up. So making progress, but still a long ways to go. All right, so let's get to it. So as mentioned, you know, adding on that thicker piece of styrene to, uh, you know, space the, uh, you know, the trailer part off the chassis and to give a place to mount the, uh, you know, the chassis to the trailer. And uh, just using these M2 screws and uh, just drilling some holes through. And uh, you really just have to drill a small hole and, um, you know, going into that plastic, you can just drive it in with your, uh, with your driver and, you know, the, it, it, it'll hold really good. I thought I would get a little bit of the sanding done before I moved along too too much further. I thought it might be easier to when when some of this stuff was uh, not attached yet. So just trying to uh, trim up some of the edges and get that stuff sanded down. Uh, I'll still come back with a, a filler to uh, fill in some of the gaps and, and kind of even things out. But this gives me kind of a good rough kind of a rough first pass to make things uh, semi smooth and semi straight. So you always want to try to get as much surface area as you can with that solvent um, to uh, you know to help that thing bond. So what I did is I cut a, an angle on the side of that, and then just used that piece of sandpaper to get that sanded down smooth. And that way, um, when the two pieces line up, you're going to have as much contact as you possibly can, um, and uh, it's really going to hold a lot better in the long run. You can see here I'm you know using the super glue to kind of back it, uh, fill in some of the gaps, and um, and then you can sand that back down. It, it works it, pretty much the same as any filler does. Um, you know you could use a Tamiya Tamiya filler, you know Tamiya putty, um, or anything else. But for those big gaps, I feel the super glue works better. And with the instant cure, you know in just a few seconds you can be sanding it down and moving on instead of waiting an hour or so for it to dry. So here I'm trying to find the, the center point of the axle and then uh, line that up with the center point of these uh, fender flares. Yeah, just a lot of back and forth tweaking, uh, getting the thing set just right, but uh, eventually you work at it and it, uh, you know, it all lines up and looks pretty good. So 
you know, getting some of the inside pieces filled in with the uh, super glue, and mainly just to, uh, you know, have a nice corner, but also a little bit of backing, and then uh, getting some of these uh, top strips on. Just a top strips are more for decoration, just to kind of the looks, but um, but I guess they do add a little bit of strength to it. Okay, so I've uh, finished up the main, um, I guess, styrene work for this build. Uh, still a lot of uh, fill-in work and sanding and, and, you know, stuff like that. I'll probably put a lot of uh, little decorative items on the side and, you know, um, probably some tail lights and things. But I think the main structure is, is complete. I have the uh, chassis complete as well as um, some wheels that I think a little bit um, probably more appropriate. Uh, for this build, we'll see if he wants to go with these or not. Um, I think probably would still look better with 155s, but uh, we'll, we'll see what they end up with. Got the uh, fenders on the side, and now I need to focus on getting uh, some metal work on the top. So what I'm planning on doing is, is using tubing to create some kind of a structure on top that uh, goes across, and what I'll end up having is a... Uh, a kind of a box that's covered in canvas to represent a uh, a pop-up tent. There won't really be one in there, but it'll look like that. And you'll have, you know, the space where you could reach in to put stuff in. And um, I think that should uh, look pretty good. I'll give it the, the round tubing to match the exo cage of the, uh, of the truck that'll be pulling it. And a little bit of interest with having that uh, piece up top. So uh, let's just uh, get to that. So uh, this is a, a new tubing bender that I got for Christmas, and honestly, it's the first time I've used it. So uh, it was a little bit of a challenge trying to get it set up and figured out exactly how best to use the thing, but I, I can see it's gonna have a lot of potential. So what I ended up doing, just making really two really quick bends, and I uh, just put a little bit of a, an angle cut on them, and then uh, silver soldered on a little brass tab with a hole in it. And now uh, I can just basically run a little M2 screw with a nut and that holds that piece firmly to the sides. So here I, I basically take a, um, you know, to make the cross brace, I want to make a, a you know, a, a I guess it's a fish mouth cut on this tubing. So you just basically take the, a file and you take the edge of it and get it started. And then you take a, a round, I believe they're chainsaw file, and you just run it in there until you get the same uh, basic shape. And when you set that tubing in there, it's got a really nice tight fit. So now that the structure's complete, I'm working on the, uh, the top of this. And that is, the top is supposed to uh, mimic a uh, you know a folded up tent so the one you're seeing getting built here is not the one that I ended up using uh, the, the problem is it come out too too nice and it looked just like a square box and with no interest and you know had canvas on it and it was just absolutely just didn't didn't look right so when I rebuilt the box I had to work kind of hard to make sure I built it um, I guess wrong is the best way to put it. So I built it so that the edges weren't lined up perfectly. It wasn't perfectly square. I added little extra pieces on here and there. I sanded the corners down at weird angles and, and um, you know, clipped corners off here and there. Just basically make it look as, as irregular as possible before I put that canvas on it. And that really, really made a huge difference. So, um, you know, it just shows that, you know, perfection isn't always right sometimes you got to go for more rea uh, more of a realistic look and and uh, that's what I ended up having to do here so 
So here I'm really realizing just how hard it is to drill through that uh, stainless steel piece and get everything set up. Eventually I did it, but I broke so many drill bits and so many Dremel um, attachments and it, you know, finally got the hole through, but that's, it shows me just how strong that piece is gonna be. So it, sh it should last. Okay, so I have the upper structure complete. Uh, you know, it's a very simple structure here. Uh, the, the idea is just to hold this, uh, what am I going to call it, a tent. Uh, it's eventually going to be wrapped in a, uh, a fabric to, you know, to cover this up, but it's just essentially a styrene box. Uh, I've mounted it, um, just some simple tabs underneath. And, um, you know, these just have little tabs here on the side that mount to the top. Um, made it so you can still get in from all the sides and front and back. And it's pretty similar to um, designs I've seen online, so I think it should work really well, look, look good. I've also added in the uh, the, the uh, coupler here. Now this is from a Pushrod 3D. It's a 3D printed coupler, and it's uh, designed to hook right into the axial uh, hitch. And uh, the thing just it really works well. I've used this on several different trailers, and uh, probably the best design. Uh, coupler I've ever seen for uh, these scale scale trailers the um, it was a little bit of a pain to get drilled through here because I put remember I put the stainless steel rod and then I, I backfilled it with silver solder and I don't people realize how how tough that silver solder is but I eventually was able to you know drill and dremel and grind through and get the uh, a hole and put those the screws in to attach it but uh, that should make that tongue just super solid and um and shouldn't you know shouldn't have any issues with that so as i mentioned i want to do the uh, fabric on top of this i think that's the next thing i'll focus on and then i'll start adding in little bits of detail uh, all around the trailer and then that'll be getting it close to uh finishing up all right so let's get to that So I'm getting uh, close to the end here, and uh, one of the details I wanted to add was a, uh, a real wood floor. And I've done this on several different builds, and it just really works out great. Um, what this is, is a, a flooring from a dollhouse. Uh, it comes in uh, big sheets that um, has a thick paper on the back. Uh, what I do is just kind of um, cut the paper off, and you end up with these planks. And so here I'm just cutting them to uh, length. And getting them all set up, ready to uh, be glued in later on once they, um, you know, once they're stained and, and uh, have a little bit of clear coat on it, protect it. What I'm doing here is making a pattern. So I'm just keeping adding tape on the top, and I'll pull the tape off and then transfer that over to a piece of uh, canvas and. Uh, you know, cut it a little bit extra uh, for the seam allowance to be tucked underneath the bottom. But, you know, essentially that's just using that as a pattern. And so I left the tape on, which allowed me to take this uh, liquid stitch, which is just, just kind of a, kind of like a cloth, a clothing glue, I guess. And um, I glued the corners together and just used some clamps to hold it. And in about a half hour, it, it you know, tacks up. But then when you turn it inside out, where you have the tape, the squeeze out from the glue, you know, will be protected by that tape. And you got a nice, uh, nice corner and it didn't have to break my sewing machine out. So here, you know, getting some of the final details with Tamiya Putty. So here, you know, you see where you take that piece uh, in the, the, the canvas that was made and you slip the box in, uh, you make some, um, you know, relief cuts, you know, super glue the material down and, and that's really all you need to do and, and you're, you're done. So you make a nice little canvas box this way fairly quickly. So 
So this is a uh, some type of a, a you know a fabric material. It looks like um, a webbing, uh, almost like like tie down straps or something like that. Uh, you can find it in the uh, craft section, and so I'm just wrapping it around to make it look like tie downs. So here, just adding on pieces to the outside, just to kind of give a little visual interest. These are axial um, pieces from a kit. I uh, have some um, little small pieces in the front that are will hold some D-rings, and uh, you know, just some other things. So basically, just some just some stuff on there to give it some visual interest. So here, just uh, putting those, uh, they're just plastic D-rings, but they actually look pretty good for, for what they are. We're here, you know, kind of putting this thing together for the final time. You can see I have the uh, the new tent, so to speak, on top of there, and uh, it really does look a lot better than what's before. didn't have a whole lot of scale hardware but that might be something that that be worthwhile doing later on is going back and adding uh you know scale hardware for this this is just m2 it doesn't look too bad but you know it would look better with some scale hardware on it so these uh tail lights i don't I have no idea where they came from i can't remember but um you know they just put a screw in from the inside and and uh, kind of twist that on they're not actually uh, wired up, but, but we can do that at some point in the future. So here, uh, breaking out my uh, five times magnifying uh, glasses here and uh, a light trying to get the uh, scale nuts and stuff painted up on the side. Okay, so uh, very happy with how this little trailer's turned out. I ended up going with a uh, red color that matches the uh, truck that'll be pulling this. Added a bunch of little details around, uh, D-rings here in the front. You know, obviously my Westmade sticker. Uh, on the fenders, little scale um, hardware. Uh, they're just, um, I think these are, I think these are injection molded, but I can't remember. They could be the resin ones. But anyway, they're just uh, pressed in and painted. A little, uh, you know, faux hook, which is really just an axial. Um, I think it's made for running the wires through. So it's got a little part right here. So, but it looks like a little scale hook. Uh, the tail lights in the rear and um, you know the metal cage with the canvas uh, covered um, you know tent here and also you know we have the uh, push rod 3d uh, coupler which fits on will fit onto an axial uh, trailer hitch on the inside I have it may be hard, kind of hard to see but there's a, a wooden floor so it's a real pine floor it's um, made from um, material that you get from a dollhouse. So when you put like a flooring in a dollhouse, I just cut the strips out and uh, glued them down individually. And I, um, you know, I think everything turned out really nice. I'm very happy with this, and uh, I think it's going to work really well behind the uh, truck. And I uh, can't wait to see it on the trail. 
lots of other little fun projects going on. Until then, we'll see you on the rocks.